Hi everybody, my name's Andy Maguire. I'm trying to set myself a challenge and on June the 17th, 2020, I'm gonna try and do something, two things that I've never done before. First of all, I wanna raise some money. I wanna try and raise 250 quid for cancer research. And I wanna do that by running a half marathon, which is 13.1 miles from my house to Malvern and back and it's socially distant of course I'm going to be doing it completely solo with no one around me and I need your help 10 years ago I lost my dad to cancer and it's almost exactly 10 years to the day so I thought this would be quite a good thing to do also to promote some fitness to promote some running and Although we've been living through this pandemic and the lockdown, there is the great outdoors out there. And by running, you can see more of it. And here's an incentive. I want to raise 250 quid, but if I can raise 500 quid, I shave my head. So there's an incentive to give me double what you were going to give. So dig deep, give generously, and wish me luck. Today marks nine, de eight days before I do my half marathon. And if I'm honest, I'm aching already from my jog I did on the weekend. So today's plan of action is, we're both gonna do different routes. Um, and I'm only gonna do a three, three miler, I think today. Um, but I wanna try and pick up a bit of speed. And the incentive is that I just started my Just Giving page yesterday. And already I'm on 400 quid. So this is all feeling very, very real. And when you fundraise, I say when you fundraise, I've never done it in my life, but now I'm doing this for money, I can't let anybody down. So it's really important that I get the training in and get the run done. So I will see you later. Yeah, we'll go around the back of this lorry. And let's get this run. Yeah, done. Right, go, go. Good luck. So just back from that run and that was quite a tricky one um it was not the longest and by my calculations i'd have to run that exact run about five times to reach the half marathon distance but the whole point of it was to run a, a shorter distance try and run it quicker elevate the heart rate so when i do get round to not pushing it so hard for the 13.1 miles my heart rate will come down to a lower level and not work so hard for longer which is what i wanted to try and do um, so that's the reason I've pushed myself on a, a shorter distance. Um, but now it's water time. Where's my water? Because <laughs> that brings me on to another point. Very warm today. And on the day, I think I might try and choose a cooler time of the day. I'm not a morning runner because I need those calories throughout the day to get me through the day. I think that's just my excuse of just, just being addicted to food. Uh, but it was nice to see Laura on the way back at the exact point that I met her and then we ended up doing a little recovery run because Laura's training for um, a 5k run and she's in the, the early stages of running so we're in different stages of running but she's loving it. She's got a red face just like me so that's uh, two happy faces but I think I'm going to do something tomorrow. Might be another short one and I might do a couple of long ones this week. Hmm. I've already hit 200% of my target, which I, I can't believe. I can't believe how, how fast it's escalated and how generous people are and how quickly people have given me some dosh. And I, 
as much as I can't believe that, I actually think I still could raise a little bit more. And it's making me think I need to get training because I really don't want to let people down. So a spot of breakfast and then another run, I think. And I think I might try and do something a little longer today, maybe a five miler. But uh, all of a sudden this is feeling very real because I've just overtaken 500 quid, which means the hair is coming off. moment is certainly starting. I get to uh, sometimes even a quarter mile and my legs are just saying nope not today mate. What you're gonna do is just power through and one way you can really help yourself is a nice stretch before you start get them legs warm give yourself a chance of not getting injured so I try and do my stretches especially on my lower legs because that's where I get the worst aches and pains. Two and a half miles in now, and uh, my hammies, my hip flexors, and my thighs feeling nice and, and loose now, so that feels good. But my point is, if you're finding yourself wanting to give up, and you've only been running a week or two, just power through. I promise you, you will get there. Today's interesting thought is how easy it is to consume all those calories in your 20s and how hard it is to shift them when you get out of your 20s. I'm still sweating Papa John's from 2004. So that's today's cheeky five and a half mile run done. Although I said I'm not a morning runner. It's actually quite nice to start your day with a run because you've got the rest of your day to, to go about it. So uh, for example, I've got work today and I feel quite nicely set up now, I've been for a run. So maybe long distance, super long distance. I don't think I'll be running in the morning, but it's certainly not a bad way to start your, your day. So let me know, do you, do you like to go for a run in the morning, the afternoon, the evening? Horses for courses, isn't it? Everybody's different, but now I've got work. So now I need to jump in the shower I need to hydrate and I need to recover because I'm going to do something similar tomorrow, maybe a longer run tomorrow. <sighs> Feeling good. Okay, so that's today's work done. I'm a property photographer and that involves a lot of the time in this country injecting a bit of summer into the photographs which I had to do today because it's very overcast, no blue skies at all which means we have to make some artificial blue skies. It takes forever on the computer and all I'm thinking about while I'm editing is do I actually want to go for a jog today because it's really really windy today and I just I don't know if I'll enjoy it, but that's not really the point, is it? I've just got to get the miles under my belt and I've got to make sure that I'm okay for next week. So do I have a rest day or do I get the miles in? This is brutal. Wind is about 15, 20 mile an hour. BBC weather, it feels double that. It's having to work even harder than I planned to get this run done. It's like I'm living on a cloud. Oh, I hate this hell. Just floating around. I got a tendency to move too fast, even when I know I'm walking on glass. 
But you know the absolute best thing about having an objective or a goal, a purpose, I guess, is that half an hour ago, an hour ago, I was speaking to camera and I was having the thoughts going around my head that, do you know what, maybe I won't bother today. Maybe I just have a day off. Um, but when you have a, an objective, it just gives you that boost. Gives you that little extra that you didn't know you had. And if you don't think you've got it in a tank, just dig a bit deeper, because it's there. So the idea of today is slightly further than yesterday's run. And tomorrow will be the furthest. And the days after that will be short. But I'll try and work on some hills. And then we've got the big run in five days. But yeah, proud of myself for getting out and getting moving. It's not been the easiest. This has not been the quickest. But in many ways, it's been one of my best runs yet. So today on the run, quite a few people zipped past me at various points. And a few runs ago, or even a few, I don't know, months ago, I would have been really quite jealous of those people. But I've kind of changed my way of thinking now. And now I've, I've stopped comparing myself to others because now, because back then I used to be jealous of people that could run a couple of miles without stopping. And now that's where I am. So if I'm getting jealous of people that are running six minute miles when they're doing 10, 10 miles, that's a bit, a bit much. But it's time for some dinner, time for some carbs. And I think they're very well deserved. <laughs> That's a waste there. Right, Joey Tribbiani. <laughs> One thing I've learned about distance running is how important it is and also how difficult it is to take on fluids while you're running. First time I did this, I nearly choked to death whilst running. So let's see what happens now. Phase one, complete. In some ways, that is more of an achievement than running 10 mile. <laughs> I'm so chuffed with that, I didn't wait to drop. I need to sit down. I'm stopping and watch. I'm going to sit here. Oh. I'm really struggling. God knows. Oh, I'm going to do three more miles. Oh, oh my God. 
So many people keep saying I need to get in a cold bath. Let's get in here. I'm quite nervous about this. Oh, people have told me that this is as bad as a 10 mile run. So this, I'm just going to pretend that I'm getting in the sea and it's, you've just got to get your shoulders under. Oh, 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 it takes your breath away a little bit. I'm pretending this bubble bath is a hot bubble bath. Okay. <sighs> so with 24 hours to go until the big run, I was tapering, I wasn't doing anything strenuous and I certainly wasn't going to go for any big runs. And one thing I did want to do was just stretch my legs, go out for a gentle bit of exercise because I certainly didn't want to sit around and just watch telly all day. So I got the camera out, I went up to the top of Malvern Hills and found one of my favourite viewpoints which is at the top of British Camp. And sadly my old man never knew me as a photographer because I didn't get into photography until after he passed away. And my dad got into art, he was a very good artist right at the end of his life. And again, sadly, I really loved the idea of taking a photograph from my old man and giving it to him to paint, but obviously this isn't going to happen. But one thing that I do get from coming up to the top of the Malvern Hills is it's like therapy for me. It's a really, really nice place for me just to sit, reflect. And with a photograph like this, it just captures a moment in time and I'll always remember that the day before my half marathon, I was thinking of my old man in one of my favourite places. Right, we're live. Hello, is anybody there? Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> that lightning is ridiculous. I can't handle it. Right, I've just got a notification saying live on Facebook. <gasps> oh. I said I think I could raise 250 quid, and as an incentive, I thought that I would raise. 500 quid and if I did I'd get rid of the barnet I'd shave it completely so yeah I think we're gonna do it so right are you ready I'm not I'm quite scared you ready I don't know if I'm ready I've, ne I've never done it I've never done this before in my life I know I haven't got the greatest hair in the world but I've reached the grand old age of 34 Stop. and I've still got my hair Okay. Right, you ready? Yeah, let's just do it. Okay. Woo!
feeling nervous, excited. I've never done anything like this. I've never done anything as competitive as this. And I chosen a path early on in life, which was not a sporting path. So I don't really, f I've lost that feeling of competing. And now it's, uh, although I'm only competing against myself, it's pressure. And I'm about to see how well I respond to pressure. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm going to use the nerves and fucking relate to my performing days. It's always good if you were off stage and you're about to receive your cue line to come on stage. And if you weren't nervous, then your heart probably wasn't in it. And I'm nervous and I'm going to use those nerves to perform well. Yeah, feeling good. This is all feeling very real all of a sudden. Got a vague view of the Mulvans in the distance. Very foggy today, the sun's just come out. I've got the hat on because I try and avoid getting burnt. Another 500 meters and then I'm gonna start the clock. Nervous. Come on, come on. Okay, that's the first mile done. And you'd think that would be the easiest mile to do all day, but no. It's uphill from the second you come out the door. And I always take a while to get into my stride. But anyway, first mile done. So that's the end of mile two. It'll be interesting to see how I'm feeling in 10 miles time. About to run up the hill. I've just run down. Nearly four miles in now. I'm just finding my groove. I uh, feel like I've been going through the gears and feel like I'm in top gear now. Not sure how long I'll stay in top gear. Feeling okay, so that's the first. I'm over a quarter of the way done. Feeling okay. In fact, I'm feeling quite good. approaching to Malvern might be the toughest part of the run miles five and six are gonna be a killer and now I'm questioning why I'm not doing this half marathon in Norwich Norfolk it's a lot flatter around here these hills last forever Feels like the equivalent of the pilot just announcing that you're about to descend to land. You're on the approach to the airport. That's how I'm feeling. Feeling good. Over halfway, seven miles. Pretty much downhill all the way. Just hoping that my knees can handle 
the shock of these hills. Thank you! So just while I've got enough breath to say this, about 12 weeks ago, I got serious about running, bought some of these uh, Asics Keanos, and I got pretty serious about running. Back then, 14 weeks ago, I couldn't run a mile without stopping. Now here I am, just done nine miles, and a pretty decent pace under 10 minute miles. So if you're watching this, and you're thinking about trying to get active, get fit, You can do it. You know that hill I was on about 10 miles ago? This is it. Just approaching 11.5 miles and uh, one piece of advice that I was given which I love for this long distance run is take a mantra with you and I love the mantra or the phrase or whatever you want to call it do something today that your future self will thank you for and I've just been thinking about that for the last mile or two and it's helping me massively. Also, you know that slow and steady and nice descent I was talking about? We've hit turbulence. Captain's just put on the fasten seatbelt sign as a fly just kamikaze in me in the head. Come on! Mile and a half to go. Come on. I think I've miscalculated by half a mile. So if I went straight home, I'd hit the finish line half a mile short. So I'm running around this roundabout three or four times. And then it's the home straight. This is awful. Oh. I was talking about going up the gears earlier. I feel like I feel I've got I'm in first gear and I've got the handbrake on. But I'm still moving forward. But as I'm coming to the end. of this half marathon. I just wanted to talk about my old man. Clifford Patrick Maguire, AKA Paddy Maguire, born April the 11th, 1946. Died 31st of July, 2010. He was a pipe fitter, a welder, a man's man, you could say. And in later life, found art and how much he loved putting oil and acrylics to the canvas. And I wish that we would have had a bit more time together because I wasn't into photography back then. And I think he would have approved. I love the idea of taking a photograph for him and him painting it. I love the idea that he would have met Laura, who's going to be my wife. I think he would have really liked her. And I hope that would have made him proud. 
and we miss him every day. Ten years goes by very, very quickly in the blink of an eye. And in the same breath, something that feels like it's gone like that feels like an eternity ago. When he was diagnosed with his illness, 12 months before he died, 14 months before, he was given weeks to live. Because of Cancer Research UK, me and my two sisters and my mum, we got 14 more months of quality time with my dad. So thank you to Cancer Research because of the treatment and all the good work and the positive vibes that happened at the Redditch Alexandra kept him alive and gave us some really quality time Dad I miss you and I'm doing this for you I'm closing in on the half marathon fishing line finish line I'm going to finish strong let's go So many honks on the road, and that was amazing. That just goes to show you can do anything when you put your mind to it. 13.1 miles without stopping. Three months ago, I couldn't run a mile without stopping, so you can do anything when you apply your mind. And thank you to everyone that's donated. It's not too late to donate. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. Every penny that we raise is going to Cancer Research UK. And every penny that we raise is never a penny wasted. So, I hope this inspires you to get your running shoes on. And if it does, let me know how you get on. <laughs> <laughs> right, marathon next, isn't it? <laughs>